G'day. This is an experiment to see how long it takes for thrips to die using different chemicals under a light field microscope. So there currently is about six and a half thousand thrips from the order Thysinoptera that are known worldwide and in Australia there's about 900 that are recognized to date and many of them um, feed on leaves and flowers but however they don't usually do both. So almost 50% of known thrips species feed on fungi and a few others they eat arthropods. So thrips, um, they're a cell rupture feeder. Like they don't feed on the phloem. So the spread of viruses and stuff is a little bit slower. And globally there's um, 100 species that have been recorded that, um, that carry a really good harboring vector in um, insects for um, topovirus, tospovirus, sorry. And um, yes, so it's only 10% of them, but still, they can still bring viruses. So now you'll see the potassium acids. It's just come through. Of um, It's just had the, the line come through and it just, just got put under the um, cover glass. So now you can see how long it's going to take for it to die. Yes, so that's the first experiment. And three more to go. So that's cool. So while well, that ticks away, so with the next one, um, I use 91% alcohol. So the first one was potassium salts of fatty acids, and then the next one's 91% um, iso alcohol. And the alcohol it has a tendency to withdraw water from the cells when it's placed in the hypertonic solution. So it will leave the cells, causing the cell volume to decrease, and the cell wall in the vacuole shrinks known as plasmolysis. So, um, yeah, I end up spraying some ISO on the plant just to see how that would go too. And, um, yes, it's, it works, but you've got to be careful that if you leave it on too long, the cells are going to do exactly that, and they're going to shrink, and they're going to die, and they have a uh, hypersensitive reaction that they start to kill off their other cells. And I've got a photo up here, you can see that. So if you don't want them to, to look like what I've done, yeah, you can leave it on for two minutes and then wash the plant down after that and then go to the next plant and repeat, repeat that in veg. But in flower, um, yes, you can spray after, um, I wouldn't spray after 20 days because it dissolves terps and all the oils and stuff. So this one's wrapping up now. So this ended up taking about two minutes for it to die under the potassium salts and fatty acids. And then the next photo you'll see is um, the plant that I sprayed and I left it on for too long. So it's, this is what you don't want. <laughs> so to eliminate that, you can um, wash it down with water after you spray. So leave it on for two minutes, then ch -ch -ch. So it's the worst case in veg. And then this is when you don't want to do it. So see the top ones like day 26, is it's advanced and the bottom one's day 21. So it's, you know, you can cop that. Yeah, so it's the worst case scenario, so you get a finish, because otherwise they'll just curl over and die. <laughs> um, and resist remember too, that's right, pest resistance happens. So this is the ISO one, so the ISO just went past now. So the, um, yeah, you don't want pest resistance, because um, you use the same thing for the same length of time. It's um, not very, very good. They build up a resistance, and bios are a lot, a really, really good alternative at the start. They're... Um, in this case, you can use Monster Tyrannosis, Aureus, Cucumerus, and Hypoasis. Actually, Hypoasis, see from the name, Hypo, that's under the soil. And that's good for the, um, the pupa and the adult stage. Um, the most damage on the cannabis plant, though, is done in the larva stage. And an infestation to me would be if there's like four or five flying around at one time. So if you've got one or two, it's okay to start your bios. So if you see them on your sticky traps, quickly take action. Don't wait until there's shitloads because you'll be stuffed. And then if there's too many of them, you'll just be forced to spray or pull down and start again. There's not much you can blim and do, it's a nuisance. So this one here is wrapping up. So this is the ISO at 91%. And it's slowly killing it. And it, it, um, it was a minute 40, approximately. And I was, this for my hypothesis and this experiment, this is the one that I thought would do the best. 
I thought, yeah, sweet as, it should just take it out. But the size of the little tiny things, you know, they're just so small and they can hide against the veins of the leaves and underneath and it's really, really hard to see. So that's why with the, when you use biologicals, at least they can come in and they can get to the spots that you, you can't get to. And they can um, eat the eggs and stuff too. So here's a chart of the biologicals. So on the left hand side you can see there's the, the four good types. I use Monster Anesis. Um, and now this experiment is the RO water. And you can see down there, look. <laughs> it's going to shoot itself, is it? That's cool as. Ready? Here it comes. Look, look at that. Oh, it's shit itself. <laughs> oh, full on. So when, when the cells, it's, it's placed in a hypotonic solution, like this alkaline RO water, it, um, it enters the cell in response to the osmotic gradient. So this influx of water causes the cell to swell, and if the concentration gradient is steep, the cell may burst, a process known as lysis. So that's what's happened here. Look at it shit itself at the end, how much stuff's ugh, just messy thing. <laughs> but yeah, it kills it pretty fast, but it's not very practicable, you know, to get a plant, dip it upside down, keep it in water solution for 45 seconds or so, and then pull it out. You know, you're not really going to do that too easily. So it might work fast, but it's not real practical. So you can see here, there's the difference in the Canadian version of Spinosad's the next one, and the top and the bottom one's the Australian. So that's just the difference in the strengths to, to how many mils I use per litre. And this is the Australian version that you can get um, at the local store. <laughs> yes, it was all right. It's very weak though. And this is the, th um, the fourth one, which is under Spinosad. So Spinosad, it's, a, it's an insecticide-based comp chemical compound found in bacterial species Saccharopolyspora spinosa. Yes, yeah, bit of a mouthful. It was discovered in 85 in isolates from crushed sugarcane and it was registered in the USA in 1997. So Spinosad resides, residues are highly stable on grains and storage bins. With a, they reckon it stays up from six months to two years. So if you spray some on the side of your pots and on the tops of your pots, you've um, got a pretty good long lasting protection. So that's cool as, not bad at all. So this one here, you can see um, the RO water was 30 seconds, and this one was 40 seconds. So this one isn't too bad at all. So it's a good old alternative. Spraying's not good, you know, you want bios first, but if you've got no alternative, yeah, at least this works and you'll get a result. But I wouldn't be, uh, anyway, it's a veg thing. To each his own, someone likes smokable crops, someone likes the sellable crops. I'm a smokable person, it's quality first. <laughs> so here's the conclusion at the end. So I just put up a little chart of the little the quickness of how they work. So one's impractical, which is the RO water because it's hard to do dunk. But the spinosad 40 seconds, it's um it's very good. So the bottom two are yes. So thanks for watching and have a good day.